hot to do today, obviously, and we will start it off right out of the shoot. First up on the hot seat is the head coach of the Loyola Greyhounds. He, of course, is my friend and uh, the man who I, I got to wonder if he's starting to second guess whether or not he really wants to keep me out there after the last couple of seasons. But it's always a pleasure to welcome in Coach Charlie Toomey to the program. Coach, it's Glenn and Patrick. It's great to chat with you as always. Thank you for taking a couple of minutes for us this morning. Absolutely, fellas. Thanks for having me on. And uh, Glenn, you're always welcome I, uh, out here. I, I appreciate Pat, it. No, I usually have to see you uh, post game uh, over in the conference room, but uh, it's great to see you guys today for sure. It's it just means, you know, with the Ravens ending, it just means it's lacrosse season now. That is true. That is true. And you guys get things started Saturday afternoon, 1 o'clock, over at Ridley Athletic Complex against Georgetown. So, I, you know, let's just dive into it, right? Like, a great start, obviously, a year ago. Tremendous wins. What? Then they had this weird sort of dip, only to rally tremendously well and come up just short of winning the Patriot League. Can you sort of take us back to a year ago and, and how you sort of decipher what happened with sort of such ebbs and flows during the course of the season? You know, that's obviously you do a lot of soul searching, um, you know, through the course of the uh, the summertime um, and then obviously through fall ball. And, you know, we just we came out, we played with great energy. I don't think a, a lot was expected, you know, going into the year, uh, especially after the year Maryland had, you know, to, to finish off with a national championship and, you know, to open up at Ridley. Um, I don't want to say we caught them off guard. We played really well. You know, we, we played good, great, solid defense. I think we had a lot of guys on the offensive end that were getting their first minutes. And, um, you know, I think maybe, uh, you know, we just, we used the energy of Ridley to really propel us to a couple early season wins. Um, I'm not going to take anything away from what we were able to do against Johns Hopkins, but I will say that they were missing a couple guys that are key players for themselves uh, when they came over here. And, um, you know, what happened was quite honestly, we have, we got two great wins under our, our belt and uh, we went up to Rutgers and, you know, just lost a, uh, a tough battle, you know, to a Rutgers team that was, you know, very competitive, very, very good throughout the year. Um, and it rocked us a little bit, you know, again, our, our team was young. Um, and so, you know, it was kind of how you respond, um, you know, in those moments. And, um, you know, we just didn't handle it as well as we would have liked to, you know, we talk about playing to a standard, every day and uh, i felt like we played with a lot of emotion and when we played with that emotion um it really you know kind of propelled us to some some great wins and i think we all saw how good army was you know through the course of the year last year that that was uh you know that was a good that's a great team that's really you know kind of put themselves you know in in a the upper echelon in my opinion of of our league and bu again another very talented team. Our league is, uh, is as competitive as it gets and, um, you know, has the ability to win, you know, outside of our league. So, um, you know, we kind of found our way a little bit late again, playing with some, uh, you know, playing with some confidence towards the end, um, going into the tournament and, and playing against a Navy team that we had lost to. Um, I thought we came out of that and felt pretty good about ourselves going up to BU Um, which in my opinion at that time was probably the class of our, of our league and certainly offensively. And, um, and we were able to kind of come back from a large deficit, but uh, you know, army proved who they were and, and not only, you know, winning our league, but kind of going on and uh, you know, and and winning a couple, you know, beating a Maryland team and then, you know, going on deep into the uh, deeper into the playoffs. Charlie, when, when you look at the experience that you had last year, I feel like, uh, it was a real significant growing year for Luke Stout, a guy that uh, played really well early on. Um, obviously, uh, was was uh, on the you know come up in a bench situation for a couple games, and then came on strong uh, when uh, reinserted into the lineup. How did he kind of handle that year, and, and how do you see him kind of sizing sizing up him as as you head into this season? Yeah, I would tell you that I think that the goaltending position is is certainly a strength for us going into this year. We certainly see it as one uh, between um, you know Max Watkinson and and Luke Stout. Um, I will tell you that the uh, the team elected Luke as a captain, and so uh, you know he's got that you know confidence kind of going into practices and into games. 
Um, and we've seen them, you know, be stand out, be elite, um, you know, throughout this fall and certainly uh, into the spring. Um, so we're, we're real hopeful, you know, we're going to need Luke to be, to be on his game every game because losing a Matt Hughes and losing a Cam Wires, you know, that's certainly, um, you know, an area where we're going to continue to need to develop um, and grow. And in some of these tough early season games, um, and you saw it with Maryland last year, you're going to have to rely on north of about 15 saves to be able to get some of these, uh, some of these wins under our belt. You uh, had the benefit for years of having the brother Savio at the faceoff dot, and a year ago Eric Pacheco kind of took that over, and you know ended up winning forty two percent of his faceoffs. And I I know that some, you and I talk about this sometimes, and it's not always just about the faceoff specialists. But how does that? I guess one is it definitively still Eric's job, and then two, how how do you between he and the wings make that number grow this year? Yeah, I've always kind of said, you know, in Steve Vakeness, we trust, our, we feel very strongly about our face-off coach and, you know, and even Matt Dwan, um, you know, kind of working with our wing play. Um, I would tell you that, you know, as a graduate student, Eric probably gets the first couple reps out there, but I would tell you also that we have a freshman who's come on and, and really competed and, you know, that's a part of the game where, you know, I look at things defensively and I look at them from the goal out. I've got a face-off coach that I rely real heavily on to develop us there. And, you know, I think that's going to be a position where we need to continue to develop. Um, but the one thing that we have to do is to put ourselves in a position where if we are facing off at a 42% clip over the course of a game, maybe we've got to do some things a little bit differently, like force them back and maybe be a little more aggressive in our ride. Um, you know, take some chances somewhere else to get the ball back uh, because you certainly hate to have a make it, take it situation, um, you know, which I think we were afforded a, a few times more than we were comfortable with yeah. last year. Uh, so, yeah, it's a work in progress for sure. But I, I've seen good, good project, you know, projections that that I think that he's going to be a little bit better this year. And, you know, anytime if you're north of 50, you're probably happy there. Charlie, a lot of familiar faces back at the offensive end this season. Adam Patra, Matthew Minicus, who had a fabulous year for you last year. Evan James, who came on strong. Davis Lindsay, Seth Higgins. It feels like there's a lot of established answers there. How has that group kind of been uh, able to figure things out throughout the fall and the preseason? And, and do you expect maybe a higher degree of cohesion, given all that experience that you have coming back, than maybe a year ago when maybe some guys were in some different spots or just new to the program altogether? Yeah, Pat, we were, we were just talking about it the other day. We have seven attackmen that have started games for us. Um, and, you know, obviously some of those guys have, have moved into the midfield, which kind of changes the dynamic. Maybe you're doing a little bit of inverting, bringing some guys out of the box. Uh, but that's our veteran side of the field for sure. And we need them, you know, to handle pressure. We need them to kind of steady us, you know, especially early in the games, get going to, to have a – you know, a little bit of some composure down there where maybe we can play with a lead defensively and not feel like we've got to, uh, you know, we've got to press from from that side of the field. Um, and I think I, uh, we've seen it. We've asked that group more so in practice than anything to to be game like and to really put our defense under the that stress that they're going to feel, you know, in, in in game on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, those guys have a lot of minutes under their belt, and we need them to be veteran this year. We need them to have that composure and to lead this team. You know, you, we're chatting with Charlie Toomey, Loyola lacrosse coach here on our annual college lacrosse preview show. Coach, you know, you lose uh, some significant pieces defensively, obviously, in Peyton and Cam. Uh, the, the name that jumps out at me would be Remington Reynolds, the transfer from Rutgers. I know he's played – uh, both short stick and uh, long stick midfield. Do you have a role already kind of carved out for him moving forward? And why was someone that you he's someone that you guys targeted? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, very. It's it's hard for us to look into that portal like some other programs and and find a guy. We can't we can't go after grad students. Um, Remy was a, a young man up at Rutgers that you know maybe wanted to come home maybe wanted to put the pole back in his hand and and not be a short stick okay. um and so we gave him the ability to do that and um and he has run with it to be truthful with you um i anticipate him you know being a starting close defenseman for us uh but he's also a guy like every kid that, at Rutgers that wants to run the field you know they want to play fast and 
Um, so similar to uh, to guys that we've had in the past as long poles, um, he can handle the ball in transition, uh, but we really need him to kind of use his competitive nature, uh, his footwork, his toughness, his, his IQ um, to help us and to play, you know, probably a lead dog on the, uh, on our opponent, you know, but uh, we certainly, you know, it's been a couple of years since he's been a close defenseman. Um, and so he's still learning, you know, to be in that new role. And, uh, but we like what we're seeing and, and, you know, he'll, uh, he's going to get a ton of reps down there for sure. You mentioned Rutgers as a team that likes to run. That's obviously been part of your program DNA for a long time now. Uh, do you anticipate that this is a team that can push transition maybe a little bit more than what we've seen over the last couple of years? Well, I think it starts in the goal, right? Like mm -hmm. you got to save the ball. You got to pick the ball up off the ground to be able to do that. Um, you know, obviously there's another way and that's kind of going forward from the X, um, you know, so we have to, what I've challenged them to do is we can't stop the ball. We got to save the ball. We got to catch it. You know, and that gives you the ability, right, to just kind of get over the top. Um, we've challenged our guys in, in those phases, right? Like we call it green. We want to get the odd man break. We want to push it forward. But if we're not able to, then can we play a little bit faster, you know, off of the end line after a shot, you know, with our attack? Um, being, again, that they're veteran, are we able to do things a little bit more quickly rather than to have to settle in? and get into the last 15 seconds of a shot clock. Can we get it? Can we get north to 40 shots a game? And, uh, and that's what we've saw this fall. Uh, that's what we're certainly, you know, hopeful of doing through the spring. Coach, you know, I, I think you and I talked about this. Like, do you get a sense for before a season, how ready a team is like from, from a leadership aspect, from a mental aspect, like, it, you know, guys, you guys are taking some lumps the last couple of years. Do you get a sense for how driven they are, to say we're the team that's going to, you know, get back to the sort of Loyola standard of competing for championships. And I think every team's different, right? Like they, they just, they develop uh, through the course of the year. You look at who the, the guys elect as leaders, as captains. Um, and yes, it's a proud group of guys. You know, we recruited them here when they got here, you know, Pat Spencer was, was part of our locker room, right. And we were going to quarterfinal games and, you know, going back to, to a quarterfinal game without Pat, you know, was something that, you know, Evan James was a big part of. Kay, Joey Kamish was a big part of, right? And and so um, those guys have kind of been helping me to lead that conversation of, you know, what is the Loyola standard? And our standard is that we're going to play the toughest possible schedule that we can play on the front end in hopes that it prepares us for the league. But the league is the way to the tournament. And we have to get back to, you know, competing at a really high level in our league. So, you know, that's the first way into the tournament is to win your league for sure. When you kind of look at the the COVID era, which, you know, this is kind of the last year where you where a lot of schools have kind of larger rosters, larger senior classes and whatnot. What, what are kind of your takeaways as to, you know, what the challenges have ultimately been in terms of navigating it from a roster construction and a program perspective? You know, the first thing I would say is when I look at the COVID era, um, I couldn't be more proud that we haven't lost kids to other programs, right? Like our kids have that extra year mm -hmm. of eligibility. I think it says a lot, you know, that we have eight graduate students that, that have stayed at Loyola, have the ability to go a lot of places, um, and it just means to me that our culture is strong, right? So, so that's number one. But I would say number two, the managing a larger, um, you know, roster is just something that every program has had to do because I can't look at the kids that were part of those programs that you know the part of that year that lost and said and and just say, hey, we're ready to move on. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I I I feel very compelled that you know being the last year um, to to you know, do the right thing by anybody that's in our locker room. Um, and what it's challenge, the biggest challenge for me is that I'd love to see some of our seniors be captains and be outspoken in the locker room. And I think that, you know, that part of it has been, been missed a little bit, you know, uh, but I think like every team, you have a depth chart, you have a roster and the best guys play, you know? And so I don't care if it's a Matt Minikis who starts as a freshman in, in a five class locker room, or if it's, you know, a graduate student who's getting his first minutes, and we've had both. Um, you know, I think that uh, the guys recognize they want to win, and they put the team first. Um, 
And, you know, we're still at 52. I mean, I, you know, if we have 50 lockers, we, we're two over. So it might mean smaller classes, but this year between our fifth years and our graduates, um, we're going to have a lot of young men that are, that are leaving our locker room this year. And there are going to be a lot of new opportunities next year, but that's, that's what we're going to deal with next year. Right. So the classes, you know, have been a little bit bigger for the future, but, um, you know, and, and plenty of opportunities will be out there in the future, but I'm going to enjoy our eight graduate students plus our senior class this year. All right. Before we let you go, the, uh, of course, the big change in the sport this year, the introduction of replay. Um, have you guys worked on what that's going to look like for you? I don't know if it's something that, that in the regular season is going to impact you as much. I don't, I, I assume you're not going to like turn up and look at me up in the booth and say, Hey man, should we, I, I don't think that's the way it's going to go. Right. It's, I could, you know, everything's on the table right now, Glenn. You just kind of hang out that window, give me a thumbs up or down. Right, right. Um, let you let you know. Yeah, no, I, uh, you know, the one thing that you probably do is you'd never like to show an opponent's goals, you know, on your scoreboard, and maybe you have to start showing <laughs> your opponent's goals to give yourself a quick, a quick look at it. Um, you know, at some point, do we get to a point where, you know, we've got a former coach that's kind of a volunteer that's up there seeing it from a bird's eye view, and you know, texting you like it's it's coming. Right. And um, but I think the biggest challenge for all of us as coaches is what's reviewable, what's not reviewable in that heat of the battle. Um, we've tried to do it with score break, but quite honestly, we've got to wait till we've got ESPN games at home with different multiple camera angles that it's really going to be baptism by fire. Right. And 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 every program and every coach is going to have their own philosophy of how they want to do that, whether or not you're willing to burn a timeout for something that's a question mark. Right. So um my personal feeling is I wish it was only in the playoffs, but we're dealing with it right now, and we'll see what it looks like. All right, I'll, uh, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know what the rules are, so I don't even know if I'm allowed to give you the thumbs up, thumbs down. But we'll work on that, <laughs> you and I. We'll figure that, uh, we'll figure that out as the season goes on. Season gets yeah, underway Saturday, one o'clock against Georgetown. Huge game, obviously, to start the season as always for Loyola. Coach Charlie Toomey, always appreciate you. Thanks for taking the time for us, and we'll see you out there. All right. Appreciate you guys. Thanks so much.